विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिक्रचार्य स्थोर श्री श्रीमती भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी शिल प्रभुपाद की इस कौन फाउंडर आचार्य जगत गुरु शिल प्रभुपाद की नाम आचार्य श्री हरिदास ठाकुर की प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्री शादी गौर भक्त वृंद की ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द असेंबल डिवोटिस ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द असेंबल डिवोटिस ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द असेंबल डिवोटिस ऑल ग्लोरीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू श्री श्री गुरु एंड गौरंग So reading from Shrimad Bhagavatam. Canto 2, text 6, uh, sorry, chapter 6, text 9. And uh, since text 9 is just, uh, is just a translation, uh, I'll also read text 10. So is it, do I read uh, 10 together or do we read 9 together? Nine together, bro. Okay. <clears throat> Narayanam namaskritya Naram chayva narotama Deve saraswati vyasa Tato jaya mudirae Before reciting this Shrimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one shall offer respectful obeisances unto personality of God and Narayan, unto Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, and unto Mother, Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and unto Srila Vyasdev, the author. Nast praesu abadresu, nityam bhagvat sevaya, bhagvate uttam shloke, bhaktir bhavati nayashtiki, by regular attendance in classes on the bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotees all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed and love in service unto the personality of godhead who is praised with transcendental songs is is is, is, is established as an irrevocable fact om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय पयूयमास मित्र से पिमोक्षा नारद हिंसा निर्ते मृत्यु निरा कुदा स्मृता पायुर्यामास्या मित्रास्या परिमोक्षास्या नारदा हिंसाया निर्ते मृत्युर निरायास्या गुदाम स्मृता पायुर्यामास्या मित्रास्या परमोक्षास्या नारदा हिंसा निर्ते मृत्यु निराया गुदा स्मृता प्लीज रिसाइट
Tayu, the evacuating outlet. Yamasya, the controlling deity of death. Mitrasya, of Mitra. Parimokshasya, of the evacuating hole. Narada, O Narad. Himsaya, of envy. Nirte of misfortune, Mrityu of death, Nirayasya of hell, Gudam the rectum, Smrita is understood. Translation <clears throat> O Narada, the evacuating outlet of the universal form of the Lord, is the abode of the controlling deity of death, Mitra. And the evacuating hole and the rectum of the Lord is the place of envy, misfortune, death, hell, etc. I'll read the next one um, on my own. Parabutter adharmasya tamasas chapi paschima nadyo nada nadinamcha gotranam asti samhati. Translation The back of the Lord is the place for all kinds of frustration and ignorance, as well as for immorality. From his veins flow the great rivers and rivulets, and on his bones are stacked the great mountains. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Jagat Guru Shila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. In order to, to defy the impersonal conception of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, a systematic analysis of the physiological and anat anatomical constitution of his transcendental body is given here. It is clear from the available description of the body of the Lord, his universal form, that the form of the Lord is distinct from the forms of ordinary mundane conception. In any case, he is never a formless void. Ignorance is the back of the Lord, and therefore the ignorance of the less intelligent class of man <clears throat> is also not separate from his bodily conception. Since his body is the complete whole of everything that be, one cannot assert that he is impersonal only. On the contrary, the perfect description of the Lord holds that he is both personal and imp sorry, is both impersonal and personal simultaneously. The personality of Godhead is the original feature of the Lord, and his impersonal emanation is but the reflection of his transcendental body. Those who are fortunate enough to have a view of the Lord from the front can realize his personal feature. Whereas those who are frustrated are thus kept on the ignorant side of the Lord, or in other words, those who have the view of the Lord from the back realize Him in His impersonal feature. Om Gyanam Timirandasya Gyananjana Salakya Chakshur Unminitam Yena Tasme Shri Gurve Nama I was born in the darkness, darkest ignorance, <coughs> and my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my respectful obeisances unto Him. Krishna Swadhamo Bhakate Dharma Jnana Dibi Saha Kalau Nasta Drisham Esa Puranarko Adono Dita This Bhagavad Puran is as brilliant as the sun and it has arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna in his own abode. Accompanied by religion, knowledge, etc., persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of ignorance in the age of Kali will get light from this Bhagavad Purana. Before I start speaking today, I will seek the blessings of all the senior Vaishnavas to be able to speak something to glorify our eternal spiritual master, Jagat Guru Shila Prabhupada, and help us all together in this path of devotional service. So Shila Prabhupada in the purport says <clears throat> that the perfect description of the Lord holds that he is both personal and impersonal simultaneously. So this is very important because this is our basic philosophy of Achintya Beda Beda Tattva. Simultaneously one and at the same time being different. So the Lord, Srila Prabhupada mentions in the purport, has both the personal and the impersonal feature. However, for devotees, uh, this is not a surprise because we know that we cannot limit the Lord in any form. So, 
the personality of Godhead is the original feature of the Lord, as Srila Prabhupada mentions in the purport. His impersonal emanation is but the reflection of his transcendental body. So, uh, we know that the original form or the original feature of the Lord is his personal form. Purusha means he's, he's, he's a person. And, and <clears throat> that the impersonal form is just, just the reflection of his transcendental body. Uh, now, this is a very bold statement because uh, Srila Prabhupada also is saying in the purport that the form of the Lord is distinct from the forms of ordinary mundane conception. And this is very critical because when we say that the Lord, or when we imagine that the Lord does not have a personal form, it's because we are trying to concoct or trying to understand the form of the Supreme Personality of God based on our realizations, on our understanding of the phenomena that we see. However, it's a very bold statement that is always presented in the Vedic scriptures and especially by Srila Prabhupada very clearly is that, uh, that the Lord is not impersonal. That the Lord has a personal form. Uh, and that it's distinct from our mundane conception. And we know this because even in Srimad Bhagavatam it says Brahmeti Paramatmeti Bhagwan iti sab, sab that the Supreme Lord is realized in three aspects, and that is the impersonal Brahman, the localized Paramatma, and lastly, as the Supreme Personality of God. So there's three features of the Lord. And so the impersonal feature is there, but the impersonal feature is not the most important. In the purpose, Srila Prabhupada also writes that his Impersonal emanation is but the reflection of his transcendental body. And we know that in Bhagavad Gita, we learn that the Brahma Jyoti, the effulgence that is coming, is compared to the rays of the sun, which emanates from the body of the Lord. So, in the Bhagavad Gita also, you know, we have the shloka that Lord Krishna states, Divi Surya Sahasrasya, that if hundreds of thousands of suns were to rise into the sky, their radiance might resemble the effulgence of the Supreme Person in that universal form. Sahasrasya means thousands. So, no wonder that when the universal, because you know, this, this chapter is the Purushukta, is, is being described, we, we see about the emanations from the body of the Lord. However, these emanations is already described to us also in the 11th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Because the 11th chapter of Bhagavad Gita is also about the Virat Rupa. So, in Bhagavad Gita chapter 11, the universal form, Srila Prabhupada comments some, some, he has some very good comments in his purports, especially after uh, I think it is 48, when the impersonal form description is stopped by the Lord, and now it turns into the bhakti part. The last six shlokas actually uh, emphasize the importance of bhakti. So, Srila Prabhupada in, in his purports comments that one needs to have a divine vision and be godly to see even the universal form. That even to see the universal form, we need to have some godly qualities. And that this form is manifested just to draw the attention of those who have no love for God. So this form is being shown, obviously we know, uh, it was shown to Arjun on the request of Arjun. Arjun wanted to see the form. Uh, but it is, it is, Srila Prabhupada says, the attention is drawn so we can have for those who have no love for God. But Srila Prabhupada in his purport on chapter 11 also writes that the universal form may be seen. Now this is a very critical point. Srila Prabhupada says that 
the universal form can be seen by adding a little tinge, a little tinge of devotional service. So just by adding a little tinge of devotional service, by doing what? By doing some penances, by Vedic study, by philosophical speculation, even with that little tinge, we are able to see the universal form. However, the key is here. However, without a tinge, without a tinge of bhakti, one cannot see the most confidential form of the Lord. So here we just need a little tinge to even see the universal form, Shana Prabhupada says. However, without even the slightest tinge of bhakti, we cannot see the two-handed Shamsundar form of the Lord. So this is very critical because right now we are in Karthik when we have the Vasalya Ras very predominant. As we know, we have the five mellows relationships with the Lord. And right now, Vatsalya is very, very high. So there is some rasa that is taking place. And Srila Prabhupada very clearly states that without even some tinge of bhakti, you cannot see the form of the Lord. And in uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita 1154, we have the shloka bhaktiya tu ananya shakya aham eva vido arjuna gyaktum drashtum cha tatvena pravastam cha parantapa my dear arjuna only by undivided devotional service can i be understood as i am standing before you and thus be seen directly only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding so you can see very clearly what the lord is saying that you can see me as I am standing. So, as we read today, in the purpose, Srila Prabhupada states that when we see the Lord from the back, we are seeing actually the back of the Lord, which is, which is uh, ignorance. However, when we are standing in front of the Lord, we are seeing the Lord face to face, personal form, just like we are here right now seeing the beautiful form of Rukmani Dwarkadesh, none different from Krishna. Because it's the Archa Vigra form of the Lord. So, this is very critical because Krishna himself says that you can only see me standing before you by what? By un undivided devotional service. So, so, this is very key. And for us as uh, devotees, we are never interested Devotees are never interested in the impersonal form of the Lord. Devotees are interested in the personal form of the Lord. Because we want to have a relation, sambandha, in Sanskrit. You can't have a relationship unless you are engaged in the service of the Lord. Devotional service. So in today's purpose, Srila Prabhupada says that those who are fortunate enough to have a view of the Lord from the front can realize his personal feature. Similar to what Krishna says in 1154 in Bhagavad Gita. Even the demigods are seeking this opportunity to see the form. Not just us, even the demigods. And we know this because when Devaki has Krishna in a womb and a body is very effulgent, we know that the demigods actually come. And why do they come? They are actually singing. And, and waiting for the arrival to see the Lord in his. Obviously we know that the Lord first showed the four hand form to Devki and then and Vasudev and then changed it to the two hand form. But also the demigods are so eager to see this two handed form of the Lord. So, Srila Prabhupada writes that by continuous, now this is very critical, that by continuous Krishna consciousness and devotional service, can one's spiritual eyes be opened and can see Krishna by revelation. So we know that the Lord is covered by his Yogmaya curtain, by his Yogmaya potency. So in order for us to be able to even be able to see, because as we know in the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord had to give Arjuna spiritual vision in order to see the uh, universal form. 
Similarly, Srila Prabhupada is writing uh, that by continuous Krishna consciousness and devotional service, so it has to be continuous. Does he say sporadic? Does he, does the, you know, Srila Prabhupada doesn't say that it has to be sporadic. Srila Prabhupada doesn't say that it has to be come and go. Srila Prabhupada says continuous, so the word is continuous. So continuous Krishna consciousness and devotional service. One spiritual eyes can be opened to see Krishna by revelation. Srila Prabhupada continues to write in the purports that the transcendental process of how Krishna becomes dear is also explained because Srila Prabhupada further states that yes, we have to do devotional service. And that has to be done constantly. But what Srila Prabhupada also says, that to hear about Krishna from authorities is actual Vedic process. Because what happens by hearing about Krishna from bona fide sources, Krishna becomes dear to us. So how do we cultivate that we love Krishna? Is Srila Prabhupada, that's why you know we have the nine processes, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, starts with Shravanam, hearing. And Srila Prabhupada has emphasized before that Bhagavatam is the best form of hearing. So, in the purpose, Srila Prabhupada is also saying that actual Vedic process starts that when you hear from and listen, and it is explained by bona fide spiritual masters, then through that process, Krishna becomes dear to us. And when he becomes dear to us, he opens his Yogmaya curtains and reveals himself. And that is how the revelation comes. So it's a very clear process. And we can see that also from how the Bhagavatam is done. Parikshit Maharaj is surrendering to Sukadev Goswami. And then there's the hearing and speaking process for the benefit of all humankind. So, this is very critical what Srila Prabhupada had say, said that first and foremost, we need to listen. But we need to listen from whom? Just from anyone? No. Srila Prabhupada has very clearly said we need to listen from authorized bona fide spiritual master. And then what happens through that process about hearing from bona fide authorities, Krishna becomes dear to us. And as Krishna becomes dear to us, we engage in the service of the Lord. We are steadfast in that service. And through that process of continuously engaging in the service, what happens? We actually get revelation in our, within us. So this is very critical. And, in, you know, about... Um, this unflinching devotional service, we also have it in the Swetashvatara Upanishad where it says, Yasya Deya Parabhaktir Yata Deya Tata Guru. So what is actually being stated is also stated in the Swetashvatara Upanishad because Yata Deya Tata Guru. That one who has unflinching devotional uh, devotion uh, for the Supreme Lord and is Directed by the spiritual master in whom he has similar unflinching faith, can one see Krishna by revelation? So, there are some, some very important points here. Yasya de para bhaktir. One has to have what? Unflinching devotional devotion to the Supreme Personality of God. And this is done by a direction. Direction from whom? By the spiritual master. In whom he has what? Also similar, unflinching faith. Not just faith, unflinching faith. And then Krishna reveals himself. So, when we are sitting in this room, do we all have unflinching faith in our captain, Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada? You see, this is very critical that we have unflinching faith in Srila Prabhupada. So we have that unflinching faith. Why? Because we know that we are getting closer and closer to Krishna through the mercy of Guru Kripa Bhai Bhakti Lata Bij. So, 
one who does not take personal training, so Srila Prabhupada continues to write in the purpose, that one who does not take personal training, uh, so doesn't take personal training, guidance of a bona fide spiritual master, it is impossible to even begin to understand Krishna. So without the personal training of a bona fide spiritual master, it is impossible even to begin to understand. So it's not just it is impossible to understand Krishna, it is impossible even to begin to understand. These are two different things. One, you know, we are saying that it is, it is impossible to understand Krishna. But here, the way it is written in the purpose, it is, it is even impossible to begin this process. So, so no other process can be, and then, this is very critical. Uh, Srila Prabhupada then continues to build on that and he says, no other process can be used, can be recommended, or can be successful in understanding Krishna. So very systematically, Srila Prabhupada nails it down to the point that no other process can be used, can be recommended, or can be successful in understanding Krishna. So, this is very critical for us, that when we read Srila Prabhupada's books, everything is there. Everything. We just have to read Because very clearly Srila Prabhupada is telling us how do we establish that relationship with Krishna? How is it that the revelation comes? How is it that we even go further and if our mind is thinking, oh I, I want to do it this way, maybe we can do it this way. Very clearly the brakes are put on us. That there is no other process that can be recommended is successful in understanding Krishna. And Krishna himself tells us the science. He's telling us how to come to him. He says, Bhakti Atu Ananya Sakya, that my dear Arjun, only by undivided devotional service can I be understood as I am. So the Supreme Godhead, Srila Prabhupada says, exchanges transcendental love in his original form of Krishna. And we know that there is Four gunas that are in 96. We have 96% quality in Vishnu and we have 100% in, in the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One of that is that the Lord has love in exchanges. So Srila Prabhupada says it's only under the Shamsundar form that this exchange of love in transcendental service is reciprocated. And we can see that during this Damodar month between Yashoda Maya and between Lord Krishna. So, as, as we read Damodarastak, we have also um, <clears throat> very important, uh, you know, we have the eight prayers that we do every morning during this month. And in the third one it says, the Lord herein reveals, I am conquered and overwhelmed by pure love and devotion. To the Supreme Lord Damodar, I offer my obeisance hundreds and hundreds of terms. Again, the Lord is saying that, Herein reveals that I am conquered and overwhelmed by pure love and devotion. So it's only love that conquers. And that love is through devotional service. Now, I would like to end and then open it up for questions. You know, we are in the month of Kartik. So we are also looking for the mercy of the Lord. Now, the Lord also says how to please Him. So, one of the things that this temple is doing, that this temple has done all these years, is book distribution. Book distribution has been the backbone that this temple really, under the leadership of, of Swavas Prabhu, is always working on. So we know that this year we are doing 30,000 Bhagavad Gita's as compared to 20,000. You know, why? Because we want to please the Lord. And we know that if we please the Lord during the month of Karthik, we get, our, the benefit is expounded many times. Because in the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord himself says in 1869, Na cha tasman manyase su kaschin me priya 
कृतमा भाविता ना चा मैं तस्मद अन्य प्रिया तरो बुवी तो देर इज नो सर्वन इन दिस वर्ल्ड मोर डियर टू मी देन ही नोट विल देयर एवर बी वन मोर डियर हु प्रिचेस हिज ग्लोरीज सो वी आर वी आर वेरी लक्की इन न्यू द्वारका द नॉट ओनली आर वी ब्यूटिफुली सर्व इन द डीटीज एंड इंगेज इन डिवोशनल सर्विस बट वी आर ऑल्सो ट्राइंग टू स्प्रेड द नेम ऑफ द लॉर्ड सो with that i will like to open it up for any questions any comments think ananda kirtan prabhu has some question i can repeat the question reach perfection or is propod just recommending people to somehow or another turn to god consciousness rather than just be atheistic completely so i just want to make sure i understood your question so is the question prabhu that uh the other religious philosophies are they is shila prabhu pad recommending them because they are doing some kind of devotional and get into some kind of perfection is yeah. that the question yeah you, you know even like buddhism or islam you say whatever you follow that's okay as long as it's bona fide correct so you know shila prabhupad also has stated this you know that it is better to follow and even lord krishna says this that it's better to follow in every path actually you're actually following in one way or the other you're following lord krishna but it's better to follow those paths than to completely be atheistic it is more advantageous at least you're you 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 you're, you're following the path of god now so shila prabhupad obviously has said this in two different aspects in two different contents depending on the audience i presume because if he is speaking uh, to a general mass at least you want to bring them up to the next level it's just like you go to school and uh, the teacher can give knowledge at different levels but if you are at at the lower level the knowledge is dissipated according to your understanding so at least is encouraging but then for people who have followed or the general mass who are following the bhakti cult that is what we are trying here then we are brought to the highest level that you know once you are at that highest level you don't want to do anything at the lower level why because you want you already are enjoying a relationship with the lord in his personal feature now you see even in today's uh, if you see today's translation it says that um, uh, that uh, uh, very important just let me see see what it said is uh shall for part said in his personal feature whereas those who are frustrated and thus kept on the ignorant side of the lord or in other words those who have the view of the lord from the back realize him in his in his personal feature so you can see it just depends how so so in one way or the other the we are being encouraged to actually follow this process yes goranga pre you know we have senior devotees here you know archita naikatma prabhu you know regarding to uh, ananda kirtan prabhu's question it reminds me uh, 
one lecture by my Guru Maharaj, Tama Krishna Maharaj. You know, he was saying in that lecture that if one sincerely following the teachings of Lord Buddha, then by the mercy of Lord Buddha, he will gradually become Krishna Bhakta. And similarly, if one sincerely following the teachings of Lord Jesus Christ, then by the mercy of Lord Jesus Christ, he will ultimately become Krishna Bhakta too. Yeah. So there are different religions, just like uh, there are different schools. There is primary school, middle school, high school, university, like that, you know. Yeah, so... Different like, grades. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. you know, actually, if you look at it, all these are, these are empowered personality, uh, empowered purushas, you know, when we know that um, Jesus Christ is, Srila Prabhupada said, is Sakti Avatesha. So their work is to bring you close to God. Their actual message is to bring you close to Krishna. So if you see what Guru Maharaj said, Tamal Krishna Maharaj, it's basically to bring us closer. So they are bringing us closer. You know? Any more questions? Any more suggestions? Shrimad Bhagavatam class key.